Is it a case of difference in ability, or do you think it's perhaps been a bit too much for the Qataris? Big game for them. <laughs> Way too much. And like Alan said about that, it's the physicality and tempo they cannot handle in transitions when they're so direct, they're so out of shape and spread. Ecuador have just really hit them through the middle, and they can't handle it. Yeah, that's what the coach talking about. He was worried about the physicality mm -hmm. of his team. Yeah, and it really shows just that level of tempo. Yes, they've been together since June, but in terms of playing against competitive competition week in and week out, you can see the difference. Yeah, Ecuador, though, they'll be absolutely delighted with their first half performance. Yeah, well, what, a, what a great start to a, to a campaign it is for a tournament for them. Um, I think they've come out, told you Enna Valencia's a good guy, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. he's, been, he's been lively, but I think they've been in total control. They've had comfortable possession at the back, um, they've built it up and they've been able to pick their times when they wanted to go and cut through the Qatar team at will. Uh, I mean, he could conceivably have a hat-trick. Now, I do know that if, if it had been given as a goal, everything's different. It doesn't automatically follow suit. Um, but v VAR, they found a way. Well, I'm going to have a blum and high blood pressure at the end of this month as it continues like this, Gary. Um, I mean, I, mean it, it, there, I don't think there's any person watching this in the world no. that thinks this is offside. I mean, Ball goes up, the challenge is there, and we're, we're all thinking, OK, it's not a high, high kick there, he wins the header there, fair header there in the, uh, in the back of the net. I mean, technically, you could make an argument that it... You well, know, because have. when he heads it, his foot's marginally head, and it goes up and it bounces, and it fiddles around a little bit. But really, uh, is that what VAR is for? <laughs> I don't just think, it's, it's like what you said, it's absurd. Al. Everybody watching the game would have just went goal, goal straight yeah. away. The head. That, that proved, he punched it onto his head for yeah. start, not only makes it, you know, but, I mean, oof. peculiar. Ma madness. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, do you know what, the, the, no. the sad thing is, is that you, you, you have 60,000 in this stadium. And no one had a clue what millions was going on. Millions and millions, millions around the world. That. No one had a clue what was going on. Where in the, and there's just no information being, being fed back no. at all. That can't be right. No, no not right at, at all. Um, but he did get his goal. He in did. fact, he got two in the end. <laughs> yeah. um, and it all came, Gary, off once again the transition and mm. Qatar not being able to handle it and be organised. It. It's almost like you're getting carried away. You see a pressure here, and you're like, "Yes, we're on the attack." But one false pass. Look how direct Ecuador is. Within three passes, straight down the middle here. It's a great run by Valencia, and you're in through on goal. But they just can't handle it. I was always told as well, even though playing, always still think yeah. defence in attack because that's when you can be left wide open. You really have to be switched on and organised. And it just shows defensively they couldn't handle it with this one. And actually, your mate stepping up and getting the goal, yeah. what a great guy. Didn't need VAR for that, for that one, really. Although uh, they might have given offside for the penalty. <laughs> 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 he seemed very cool, wasn't he? So cool. Yeah, very very nice. cool. Yeah, it, was a, it, was, it was a good penalty. It was a good run as well for, yeah. to, for him, from yeah. him to win the penalty in the first place. But I think in this kind of situation, he just had the goal disallowed. Yeah. Stadium opening game for him to step up and just yeah. casually roll it and shows what the character is. I mean, each is. of Ecuador's last five World Cup goals have been scored by Valencia because he got all three. Uh, of his efforts in 2014 as well. Right, OK. But do you know he what? He knew that because he would have told you in the dressing room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Skipper, leading by example, that little bit of experience, what we were talking about before, playing in the Premier League for so long, you can see it. He probably is one of those players in that Ecuador team that just settles everyone's yeah. nerves before the game, got the message across, and, and just the way that he performed, I think he was, you know, it was a good, strong first yeah. half from him. Yeah. Second goal. Gives him that cushion. <coughs> um, cracking header, or did it, do you think, just came off his ear and no, sneaked in the corner? But Sitting here with two strikers, you're moaning about how, how you know, it wasn't a clean header. No, that. Well, was no, it it the strikers know that it doesn't matter how <laughs> it hits the net. Well, first and foremost, the, the, the ball, the ball was, was unbelievable. Um, and he's just, what he's done, what, what's clever about it, we can see it from, from the other angle. Is, right, it's a great header. Yeah, he's just, he's just used experience, so now he's just popping up in between the, the centre-back, the full-back, and now, as a, as a, as a centre-half, he's checked, he's, looked, he's seen where he is, he hasn't checked again, he stays just on his shoulder, just out of sight, hoping 
that the ball will drop in between the sticks. It's a great ball, and he's still got a bit to do because he's near the penalty spot there when, when he makes connect. Caicedo does really well in terms of, of getting that ball and driving forward with it, but the cross from Procardo, yeah. I mean, it is unbelievable. It's actually crying out for someone to get on the end of it, and he did that. And there's nothing fluky about that at all. No, no, it looks yeah. no, I never said there was. You said you might have come off the side of said. I said it was a cracking header. A great header. <laughs> did it? It, it, it certainly was a great uh, he's taken a bit of punishment, though, hasn't he? Hopefully he's all right, because it'd be a real shame if he, if he was struggling for the rest of yeah, the Yeah, the, um, they're, they're obviously going about it and, and thinking, well, he's, he's obviously the, the danger man, and he's, he's had to take a couple of uh, heavy tackles, and he did limp off there at half-time, and I, I hope he's OK, and he will, because he, you know what he'll be thinking. He'll be thinking of more goals in that second half, because they will get chances. The other one was a bit of his own doing. It didn't look particularly bad, but, but then he got a Ouch. Yeah. I mean, it, it, automatically at this stage of a tournament, it's the first half of the first game of the World <laughs> Cup, and we've got a golden boot contender. <laughs> we don't want him limping <laughs> off. Uh, uh, I mean, Qatar, as you said, Alan had one chance in that half, but it was a it was a great chance. Their only had. touch yeah. in the uh, in the 18, yeah. 18 yard box, so, and it was the last couple of seconds, wasn't it? It was really good play. The only bit of good play that they've had. I mean, uh, I mean, I mentioned the cross from Procardo oh, for Ecuador's goal, and that is another beauty there, and it should be in the back of the net. Just Can we agree that contact. wasn't a good header? That one we, we're yeah. in agreement. <laughs> yeah. It's like he just took his eye off the ball. The simplest thing, he just needed to head it on target, but... Oh. It's almost just like it was a little bit too high. Sometimes you, you, you try and take the weight off when it's like that, but... It, but he took too yeah, much off. Just needed to, just, just need to get it on target. It. The ball exactly. was perfect. It was put on a plate yeah. for him. He it had all the pace on it. Just get it in between the yeah. sticks away from the goalkeeper, but yeah. unfortunately he couldn't. Yeah, it's been a tough debut so far for Qatar, but uh, Ecuador looking good. I uh, would encourage you to stick with us for the second half, but if you are on the move, you can always take the World Cup with you. Against Senegal uh, tomorrow. And there it is, and uh, overall there was, there was quite a chasm between these yeah. two teams. Yeah, one in the first half, it was a poor second half. Yeah, um, dull. Ecuador managed it really well, there was no way that Qatar were getting back into the game. They kept the ball when they had to without being too much of a, a threat themselves. And yeah, it was, a bit, it, was a bit, it was very flat, yeah. wasn't it, the second half? Even the crowd disappeared just yeah. after half-time, didn't they? They did a lot of them, yeah. yeah. A lot of empty seats. Um, they, they avoided embarrassment, I suppose, is the thing to say in the second half, Qatar. I think that was down to Ecuador, actually, not coming out and yeah. just, just really not exerting themselves. Maybe for what thinking about, yeah. Mm. I think the disappointing thing with Qatar is even when they did manage to get any kind of possession, they were so sloppy with it and gave it away and wasn't sure what to do. And you think it's potentially a long week and a long group stage for them. Yeah, it could be. And a short tournament, yeah. possibly. Um, there's just a a real gulf between the quality of the players on either side, really, and, and ultimately that's what it comes down to, football, isn't it? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Qatar, they just couldn't, they couldn't get themselves into it, they couldn't really build anything, they couldn't get out of their own half at times. Ecuador was set really well for the press and, and, and to win it back. It kind of turned, especially second half, it turned into a bit of a training exercise for Ecuador. Uh, Ecuador. I think that they, um, it was wise the way they played it. They probably conserved some energy for two you know the, the difficult games that they've got left in the in the group stage, yeah. but it was a, as Alan said, it was a, a flat second half. But Ecuador professional and got the job done. Yeah, Let, let's run ourselves. It, it would be a concern, but uh, I think they was in such a comfortable position that any kind of risk they would have took him off today yeah. anyway. And they do have a few days now yeah. to to manage whatever you know the the problem might be. But they, I think, on the basis of today, they're a good, very good team, very strong team. But playing against Senegal and Netherlands, Different. they are going to need him at full fitness to do what he did today. That'll be a different proposition, Alex. Oh, they absolutely will. Their movement off the ball, how quickly they move it. It's about being organised, but they're going to be good games to watch. Yeah, so they are. Uh, what, was, what, what gave them the edge, apart from obviously better footballers, what, what gave them the edge? When, when you're playing against poor opposition, and that's what Qatar were this evening, you've got to move the ball quickly including when you win the ball back off them or when it's a poor pass of them. Your first thought has to be, can I play that ball quickly? And that's what Ecuador Break did. Break the lines. The, 
pass it forward, there you, there you go. And all of a sudden, you're in, you're in behind because the turnover of possession is, is really key and moving it really quickly. And, and players of this opposition, they can't deal with that if you do it as quick as what Ecuador did tonight. And that's, that caused a lot of the problems for, uh, for Qatar when, when they did that. You've got to have willing runners in behind. You've got to have someone or people who are good on the ball and can pass like that. He spots the space straight away. There you go. That's what I meant, the turnover of possession. Straight away, first thought, forward. Into them. Into the, uh, the, the back five, as it was at war. And, yeah, that's, um, that's what won them a game, essentially. Sure, all those clips that you're just talking about there, Al, and what we've just shown... It's the movement off the ball. Every Qatar player there is ball watching. As soon as the ball goes forward, they don't even know who's running off their shoulder and where they are. They're just ball watching the whole time. And you think when they play against the Netherlands and yeah. Senegal and their uh, movement. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it, <coughs> if, you, if you don't. Um, I think overall Qatar had three touches in the opposition's box in the, in the game. But, but they all led to kind of half chances, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's not enough, really, is it, if you're... If you're if you're opening the World Cup and you, and you want to give a good account of yourself, this was the best one, yeah. obviously. I think that could that have made all the difference. Stop just, your time in the first half. Yeah, oh. just before half-time, a perfect time to score. Um, and it's just, it's just a little bit of technique, I think, now, a little bit of panic in front of goal. But they, they did try this diagonal ball a lot, which didn't come off. But I think three touches, that's actually not a bad effort, to be honest, yeah. from, from that distance. He's, Very difficult. he's just outside the post. Um, but even even in the build-up, at times it was just so sloppy. They would they would manage to get into the middle third, um, and, and nothing would come of it. That, that's actually a good ball and a half decent chance. But it, it, it wasn't. A, they didn't do nearly enough to win a game of football at this level. Um, and you know they've got work to do because, as we've said, they're coming up against more, you know, tougher op opposition. Not one effort on target, and three touches in the box. Yeah. No one near good enough. Um, we've got a contender. <laughs> um, Alan, you mentioned. Uh, the empty seats, they're obviously very empty now, everyone's gone home, but it seemed full at the start of the game, full, and then at half-time, we thought, we, we, you said straight away, you said, a lot of empty seats, mm. and we thought it was perhaps one of those things where they come back from the corporate things, but... Yeah, this is an hour into, yeah. the, uh, into the game, Gary, and it, there, there were so many, and, and so many leaving, in fact... Disappointment sort of, with their team, it, I uh, imagine, it, it must it, have been. At half-time as well, it, uh, they just never came back into the, to the stadium, certainly not in the, in the numbers that were there. At the uh, ahead of the game, so yeah, rather it just surprising. really didn't help how flat the second half no. was, and nothing really yeah. entertaining or exciting to even yeah. keep. Them well, we're game. doing our best with it, but I'll give you a little stat here. Uh, um, there was a combined total of 11 shots today, which is the joint lowest in a World Cup game since 1966, which is as far back as that type of information has been recorded. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we did our best to find the. We had two, <laughs> had two goals, though. It's been a lot of nil nils, so it wasn't all bad. It was a good start to the game, though, wasn't it? It was it's plenty to talk about. Cracking start. start. I thought we were going to get. But you know what? Ecuador will take that all day. They're yeah. happy with well, that. Well, I think they've once got they got the two up for half time, they just. Yeah, and then they, they, they just took their foot off the gas a little bit. But it wasn't, um, <laughs> it wasn't the spectacle second half. Senegal and Netherlands are playing tomorrow. They'll be watching that. The other two teams in Group A. Um, they won't be terrified. No, I don't think they'll be too worried. Although. Mane is missing, isn't he, for, uh, for Senegal, so they might be a, a, a different yeah. proposition. But uh, they, they won't worry too much about both of those yeah. teams tonight. And, think. of course, the, the, the top two from this group will play, could play, I should okay. say, Good should they day. qualify, <laughs> England or Wales, or hopefully both. And that's the thing, you're also looking for the route. And also, like Al just said, it's never getting complacent. It's about getting the job done yeah. and not focusing on other people but yeah. yourselves and what you can bring. Yeah. Yeah, but there's always a danger, though, isn't there, when you start to look ahead at who you might play in the knockout, yeah, yeah, but no, we all do it. Because you, can only, you, you really have to focus on that next team, and that is all you can do, or that next training session, or that next game, because if you don't, you'll get stung yeah. because you're, you're looking too far ahead. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow with England. Uh, midday, we come on air, kick-off at uh, 1 o'clock uh, UK time, uh, Alan. And you, just, I mean, we played in World Cups that, that night before the opening game. There's always a... Is yeah, the night, the night before is, is, is great. I mean, normally you'd say you just can't wait to get started because yeah. it's been that such a long build-up. Not on this occasion. You've had a, you've had a week. I well, only, probably only got here on Tuesday. Yeah. The first training session would have been on, yeah. on Wednesday. So there's no real time to, to, to be nervy or anything like that. So, Did you yeah. do anything special on the night before, before a game? You... Uh, just normal, my normal pre-match it was. What yeah. was your pre-match? Come yeah. on, that's what I've been. Chicken and beans. Yeah. Chicken and beans. Yeah. What? Just should have tried it. No, you more goals. <laughs> <laughs> How was you getting World Cup? Hey! <laughs> <laughs>
if I'd have had chicken and beans. Well, you might have won two if you yeah. had that. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done. <laughs> Ashley, and then and the, and the Euros? Were you, yeah, no. Nah, I mean, it was the first one as well. Yeah, so the only just, one. I yeah. think for the boys, they try and keep it as normal as possible. Try yeah. and keep it your routine exactly the same. Yeah. But you will have those little bit of butterflies because, you know, for yeah. the Wales team, they're on the world I've got to tell you, I, I did a, a long interview with um, Cesc Fabregas and he, he, he gave me the secret for their success. When they won the World Cup in, in 2010 in South Africa, he said the night before every match that they played, they went into um, Rainier's room, who had a big room, mm -hmm. at midnight. He said they had, um, shouldn't advertise, but he said they had Nesquik, chocolate Nesquik and croissants. And, and, and they were in there to 1 2 in the morning. Then when I, and then they won the World Cup. <laughs> wow, so. wow. Well, everyone, will be yeah. trying, everyone will be trying. I think my last one, what, 2015, I was sat in the hotel reception uh, sending my dissertation off for my media degree because I knew it was going to be my last World Cup. I was thinking ahead. You, you, see, you can, you can yeah. tell it's been a rubbish second half by the time we're trying to run down the clock, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also tell how many footballers do degrees, <laughs> Alex. You might be the only footballer I know that does. <laughs> Time sometime. What you said, you're already watching how many box sets here. <laughs> oh, god, uh, actually, looking forward to watching Wales. Can't wait, yeah. It's a massive moment for us. Um, the whole country would be uh, just buzzing, you know, to get to, to see, you know, to see the Welsh flags here in Qatar is massive. massive. Fantastic, wish you well, and England, of course. Alex Allen, Ashley, thank you very much indeed. That's it from us. Uh, what a start for the South Americans today. We're feeling Ecuador. Goodbye.